That's not good lighting. I don't know. I lost my light kit, I broke it, and now I'm trying to figure out a new light kit. And this just doesn't feel right. Is this right? Ugh, I don't get ring lights, I don't get them. They're not as nice as Softbox. That's my advice, any up and coming YouTubers. Okay, I guess. Mm. <laughs> Welcome back! I haven't told a story for a while, and that is what I built this channel on. So I owe you guys a story, and here it is. I don't like the lighting. Whoa. <gasps> I get it. Okay. I owe you guys a story. And I actually have a notes pad in my notes full of stories to tell. And I was like, what am I gonna tell? And then I found this one that I can't believe I haven't told in the past, but here it is today. But first, please make sure to subscribe if you like story times and other nonsense. Make sure to check me out on all of my other social media. Everything is linked down below. And if you have not heard the news, my very first book is available for pre-order and I'm doing follow sprees on people who order my book. So send me a screenshot of your confirmation once you order and we shall be friends. Here's the story. All right, so this took place somewhere around when I was living with my psycho roommate because I very specifically, oh, in fact, in my psycho roommate video, I referenced the fact that the reason it's so dramatic, well, besides the story being dramatic, is I have to travel this entire month. And I'm like, okay, well, I have to do this. I have to do this. I have to travel here and I don't know when I'm gonna find another place and pack and move before I have to leave this apartment. So this was right around when I was moving out of my psycho roommate's apartment. I didn't really have YouTube yet. I had, ugh. I want to say like maybe 125,000 subscribers. So I was just starting out on YouTube. Vine was my big thing. So I got a lot of Vine brand deals, but sometimes I would get a brand deal for YouTube. So this one was, I believe, a mixture of like Vine, Instagram, and YouTube. It was for a dating site. So I get this email and they're like, hey, we have this dating site and we really want to have you on. And I was like, oh, this is perfect for me because I, I'm always like, oh, I'm single and talking about like Tinder and all this stuff. So this is perfect for me, what a great brand deal. And they said, the, the cool thing about this dating site is you travel together. So like your first date is a destination date. In fact, I'm not gonna link it at all, first of all, because I don't wanna send attention to this company, but also because the video is so embarrassing. So a lot of people have seen the video. It's not on my channel, but if you've seen it, I'm so happy you're part of this like exclusive crew that's been here. <laughs> but oh my God. Anyways, that's a whole, I'll get there. So the whole point of the dating site is your first date is a destination date, which to me sounds like the most dangerous thing you can do. Honestly, when you meet anybody on Tinder, even if you're going to meet at like a bar or a restaurant, it's kind of dangerous because this person who has started your online profile who you don't know if they're real or not is coming to meet you in real life and you're giving the stranger who has some type of fascination with you your exact location and time and whereabouts. Tinder in of itself and dating sites in of itself are kind of dangerous. Sometimes people even have their first dates over at their apartment, which is more of like a booty call, I guess. But even then, it's like so dangerous and creepy. Dating apps are creepy. This one is saying that your first date is a destination date, meaning you are traveling somewhere out of state, out of a country, for your first date. And I'm like, this sounds like something I would never do in real life, but like, it's kind of an interesting idea. If you're, it's not something, I'll put it this way. It's not something that I was like, I cannot promote this product. This is bad. I'm just like, okay, this is not for me. I don't know what type of judgment call you have to make to be on the site, whatever. They gave me a list of places. Like, where would you like to do this? Cause basically what they wanted to do was have me set up with somebody on the website slash app. And we were actually going to go on a destination date. So they sent me a list first of places to go. It was like a couple places in Mexico, I think a couple places in the United States. I remember Portland was on there, New York was on there. I think Cancun and Cabo were both on there. There was definitely like somewhere overseas, like London or something was definitely over there. So I picked one of the Mexico destinations because I was like, okay, this is still out of country. It's cool. I've never been to Mexico before. I've been to London, but it's also like not a huge trip. Like I don't have to fly 10 hours to London for this thing. I'll fly a couple hours to Mexico. It'll be a fun trip on the beach. I'll get paid to do it because it's a brand deal. So cool. This like a paid vacation for a dating app. So that, that's where I am mentally. So they send over the contract and I sign the contract. So I'm now bound in this contract. Then they send me a list of guys and they're like, okay, well, here are some guys on the site. You can pick from these guys. They like sent me their profiles and I, I was just like, okay, wow, there's like no one on the site because I'm going to be honest, the guys were slim pickings, which makes sense because it's like a low key website that not a lot of people use. So I'm like, okay, 
And I was like, can we just like go on Tinder and like ask somebody if they can pose? Like, no, 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 we want it to be somebody that's authentically on the site. So I picked this guy who seems like, he's like my age-ish and we have kind of maybe similar interests and he's kind of cute from his pictures. I'm like, it doesn't matter. I'm not actually going to find love on this thing. Cause they, that was their hope I think, was that I was actually gonna find love. So they set me up with this guy, lock it in and we fly to Mexico. This is where it starts to get a little bit sketch. So <laughs> I'm in Mexico. I am overseas for a brand deal with people I don't know. Like I didn't have a plus one or anything. It was just like, we're going to go to Mexico with these people who work for the website and this date. I get there the night before my date. It was fine. It was like very weird and awkward. Like it's not people that I would generally hang with. And like there's, I'm not trying to like stereotype, but there's something about these girls and I'm just like, I could never fuck with these girls. Like these are, not, this is not my crowd. This is not my crew. I do not have a lot in common with these girls. They're very, I want to say vapid, but there's something about these girls where I'm just like, I don't, I don't mesh. So we're laying out on the beach. The guy's not here yet. And <laughs> I'm talking to this one girl who works for the site. And she's like, oh yeah, so we can definitely set you up with a membership for the website if you want. And I was like, cool, dating app, even though I knew I was never going to use it because nobody's on the site yet. <sighs> I wish I could remember exactly how this was revealed to me because that's what made it so interesting was the way it was very slowly like, they were talking about, okay. They were saying how the reason that they were doing this big social media promotion was because they recently rebranded and they were trying to rebrand the website and they changed the name. And then they told me the original name of the company, which I'm not gonna say because then you can find this name of the company, which I'm sure so many of you little detectives are gonna figure it out anyways or find the video. But basically this is a sugar baby website. And the way this was kind of revealed to me was this is for young pretty girls who want to travel and see the world but they can't pay for it so they find guys who are lonely and want company to pay for their vacations and then they go on the vacation together which first of all like I was saying in the beginning is so scary and so dangerous because you're basically saying like lonely guy looking for company young girl looking for free trips meet up overseas, literally anything can happen. Like this sounds like the way to murder somebody is this website. Hey, I'm a creepy old guy with a lot of money. Let me get this desperate young gold digging girl. Sorry, I'm trying not to be offensive to sugar babies because like honestly do you. I have nothing against sugar babies at all personally. I think that a lot of sugar babies I feel like are in fucking law school and shit and they're doing their thing. But the general setup is like, like I personally would never find a man to give me money and pay for things because that's just who I am a person. If you as a person would like to find somebody to pay for all your shit for you without really doing any work, do you? The point is, generally, it's girls who are kind of looking for just some guy to hand the money and guys who are like, let me find an attractive young girl meeting in a foreign country. You get it. I've over explained this so much. Anyways, so now I'm in Mexico with a bunch of sugar babies on a beach about to meet a stranger from the sugar babies app and I have to go on a fake date with cameras around the whole time. And at this point, I'm like, fuck, I don't want to promote a sugar baby's website. I'm desperate, I'm alone, but I am not a sugar baby. <laughs> I'm all about promoting dating apps. I am not about promoting sugar baby apps. So this is just like this horrifying realization of me being in another country, stuck in this very weird situation, in a contract for a sugar baby's website, which honestly, I'm sure I probably could have gotten out of in some way, because I'm just like, you know, like you presented this to me as as a dating app, like a destina destination dating app, but they literally changed their name. Oh, this was another thing. They changed their name because they were in some type of law trouble with being persecuted for prostitution or something. Like they were in trouble with the law. So they were rebranding their whole thing as this is a travel agency and we hook up young travelers who in financial need with older men with money who can pay for travelers, but they had like these loopholes. There's nowhere on the website that says that the guy has to pay for the, the trip, but that's what it is. It's like the guy is paying for the trip and like the, oh God, what? Oh, I wish I could remember what they changed it because the their website or app used to be like daddies and babies, but they changed it to like sponsors and travelers or like something to make it like not a sugar baby website, which sugar babies are like completely legal. So I don't know what the legal trouble was. Oh my God, I keep getting so sidetracked. Trapped in Mexico on a fake date with a sugar daddy and a bunch of sugar babies. We go to bed next morning the sugar daddy is coming. First of all, the whole process is so weird because it was almost like a reality show where they're like, okay, so you're gonna open the door and you're gonna be like, oh, nice to meet you, blah, 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 blah. Fine, it was so awkward. Anybody who's actually seen the video, this boy was 
so boring. Like the most boring human being ever. Sorry, I, there's no way he's gonna watch this. So boring, did not ask questions, barely responded to my questions, just like the biggest dud. And the whole video is just me being like, Haha, <laughs> trying to make this not the most awkward situation ever. So they have this whole thing planned where it's like, oh, this night we're gonna go to dinner and then we're gonna go to a club and this night we're gonna do this, blah, 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 blah. So I get a little bit of alone time with him just to, like get to know him. But I'm like looking at this kid and I'm like, okay, and I don't mean anything by this, but like you can tell this guy's not like loaded. Like this guy's not a sugar daddy. He looks like a normal guy. Normal, early 20s, just got out of college, paying my bills guy, a couple years older than me. And I'm just like, how does this work? Like you're on this website? Like are you like paying? for babies like are you traveling are you paying for these girls trips like what's the deal and he's like no honestly I made this profile like two years ago I thought it was a couch surfing website because like the name of the I get it like the name of the app I get why you would think that so he's like I thought it was one of those apps where you get it and then you like find places who will let you stay on their couch because you're traveling because I was like backpacking and like looking for cheap ways to do it and I made the app I realized what it was and I never used it again so when they hit me up for it I was like really confused by it and I was like wow that makes me actually feel a lot better because now I know that this isn't a sugar daddy on the website who's looking for girls to murder. But then they, they set up this date where they, first of all, they were trying to get us drunk the whole time. Like honestly, it felt like such a reality TV show where they're handing us drinks, handing us shots. We go to dinner, they're buying us shots. And they're like, do another shot, do another shot. And they were honestly trying to make us have a connection. Like I made it kind of obvious that I, well, actually no, not kind of obvious. I made it very obvious right off the bat. I was like, I'm not going to do anything to jeopardize my integrity. I'm not gonna make out with somebody on camera. I'm not gonna have sex with this guy. I'm not going to allude to the fact that there was a connection when there was not. Like, there's no, whatever. But still, they're really gunning for it. Ooh, I think you guys have a connection. You're, you guys are really laughing and hitting off, which like, no, definitely not. He was laughing because I'm hilarious. He sucks. But yeah, one night I was like getting drunk and we're just like dancing and I'm dancing the way I would like normally dance. But then I can kind of already see them splicing together, me taking a shot and then like grinding. So like I made sure I was like, okay, you can't do that because that's not the reality of the situation. They're like, okay, we promise we won't do anything. So, like sacrifice your integrity, which I will say this company was very good at that. Like they sent me the first cut before they made it live. And I was just like, no, you have to cut that. Like, I don't want a scene of me just like, ripping shots. Like, even though I was 24, I was 23 or 24 when I did it, but I just still didn't want scenes of me ripping shots because that's not the image that I want to portray. That's not me as a person. Like I'm not the girl who goes to a party and like gets wasted. Like that's not me. I mean, I get wasted, but like, I'm not that girl. I'm not like party girl shots. And that's not something I want to push onto my viewers either. So I was like, no, you can't take that. Like the scene where we're dancing, no, no, no. So we're really drunk and uh, they're like trying to push us together. And they're like, oh my God, like go grind on him. Like you should make out with him. Like, do you want to kiss him? And I'm like, okay, no, 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 not doing any of those things. So then we get back to the place we're staying. All the producers and stuff finally go to bed really late. So then he like, texts me and he's like, do you want to hang out for a bit? I was like, sure, whatever. So then he comes in and it's like kind of awkward because he's there for a long time and he's kind of like scooting closer to me on the bed. And I'm like, no, like shut it down, not happening. So he did try to hook up with me, but not in a like disrespectful way, just sort of a like a, hey, we're both drunk in Cabo, like we should hook up kind of way, but I like wasn't into it. So that was about it for the actual trip. Super, super awkward video, super, super awkward experience. Obviously no chemistry with the guy, had to have like a really weird post interview where I was like, yeah, this is how I feel about this guy. So then we get home. I think he texted me one time and I blew it off and then he, put something on Facebook like a year later and I commented something and all of the comments were like, one of them was from somebody who I think he was dating at this point. Like I think he had a girlfriend now and she commented something really snarky. I forget, oh God, I wish I could remember what it was, but it was just such a weird fucking comment. And then all of his friends on it were like making fun of me. And I was like, this is weird. <laughs> and I also couldn't figure out why they were making fun of me. Cause I went because I was being paid to go. Like this was a brand deal for me. I was getting paid to promote this website. He literally went to Mexico for a free trip. Like this guy, Traveled to Cabo, did an awkward first date experience, was with all strangers just for a free flight to Cabo. Like, don't make fun of me anyways. So here's where it got really tricky. I was very vague when I was promoting it because once I got there and I realized what it was, like I was contractually obligated to still talk about it. But the way I talked about it was very vague. I did minimally, con minimal contractual obligation. Because at the end of the day, they kind of lied to me about what the service was, so like I, was, I wasn't about to just like sit here and promote this like sugar baby website when they told me that I was marketing a dating app. You know what I mean? So, you know, fuck with me. I just feel like something really happened with my hair throughout this video and I don't know how to get it back to a happy place. Okay, so I forget exactly what month this was, but part of it was making, ugh, my hair, fuck. I feel like old Gabby where I touched my hair every 30 seconds in a video. I gotta fix it, I'll be right back.
Fact. Okay, so YouTube advertising. Basically, YouTubers' rates, I've always been really open about branding, so I don't care about talking about it, but your you, your rates change really quickly, especially if you have a quickly growing channel. So somebody who has 100,000 subs isn't getting paid the same as somebody with 500,000 subs or a million subs, so on and so forth. So I forget how many subs I had at this point, but it was definitely like in the 100,000 range, maybe 200,000. So we agreed on a rate for this amount of subscribers, and they said that they would want a YouTube video about the experience promoting the website slash app by, I think it was like the next month. So, God, I should go look what month that was. It was when I was living with my psycho roommate. If I figure it out, I'll put it right here. <laughs> so this is months later. My channel had exploded exponentially, and at this point, I'm at home for Christmas, and it's into January now, because I stayed home for quite a while. So we're in January, and they're saying, we want you to film a video now and post it in like February. I was at about 800, almost 900,000 subscribers, and they wanted me to wait like another month or two months and post it then. By then, I was like, okay, like I'll have like a million subscribers at least by then, and you're paying me what you were gonna pay me for like one to 200,000 subscribers. This isn't okay. Because they were taking so long to edit their end of the video, so they wanted to post their video, their YouTube video, and then they wanted me to make my YouTube video promoting their YouTube video. So like, you know. So now they're reaching out and they're saying, okay, we want your video. And I was like, okay, well then we need to discuss a new rate because I'm no longer even close to this rate that we agreed on. Like that's unreal. And they're like, well, unfortunately our contract says this is the rate. And I was like, okay, but you also said that you were gonna want a video at like 150,000 subscribers. I now have close to a million subscribers and you still wanna wait, like I'm not gonna do it. And then with a smiley face, with a smiley face, she said, well, unfortunately, our contract never had a posting date. It just says this amount of money for this video. It doesn't say when. And I was like, okay, but when we were talking in emails, you said you would want it for this. And she's like, yeah, but our contract doesn't say blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, first of all, I didn't want to promote this app in the first place after I got there and found out it was a sugar baby website. Second of all, you just can't do that. Like you can't wait months and months and months. And that was my fault. Now I know better and look at my contracts and I say, whatever. So they think they're gonna get a video from a 1 million subscriber YouTube channel that they paid for 150 whatever thousand subscribers and they're like smug about it, like smiley face. I'm like, wow, they probably waited this long because they saw that I was growing and they were gonna wait until I grew enough that they could like whatever. So I look at the contract and I say, hmm, you're right. There is no date on when I should post the video, but it also doesn't say what the content of the video would be. All this says is that I owe you guys a YouTube video about my experience with this app and I have to be honest with you my experience was not a positive one so yes I will make this YouTube video I will fulfill my end of the contract and I will say whatever I want about your services and I promise to give my honest opinion and review about your app and then they changed their tune or like you know what we gave it some thought and you're right we don't think it would be appropriate to post a video so we're happy to just pay you the fee that we agreed on if you just like tweet the video once or something so I did I tweeted the video and that was the end of it but they tried to play me they really did they tried me on that they really really thought let's wait a half a fucking year or something oh I felt like such a badass I really did when I was just like <laughs> according to the contract and here I am I'm making the video about the experience <laughs> anyways give this video a thumbs up if you liked it make sure to check out the rest of my social media including my vlog channel and make sure to pre-order my book if you have not oh showstopper of the week Oh, this week showstopper is Ariana's things on Instagram because when I open it up, she was just liking all my photos. Well, I appreciate you for doing that. Thank you. As always, thank you for As always, thank you for watching. I love you very much. Thank you for being a part of my family, and I'll see you next time. Get down, girl. Go ahead, get down.